grammar. Some people love it, some people avoid it like the plague. Honestly, no matter whether you love it or not, you need it to be able to communicate in English. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can improve your grammar quickly, easily, and without driving yourself crazy. Make sure you also stay until the very end of the video because I have a very, very, very exciting announcement for you. You know I don't do announcements that often, so when I do, they are normally pretty good. So please stay until the end of the video. You won't regret it, I promise. So before we get started with the first tip, I'd just like to say hello and welcome back to any returning subscribers. If you are new to my channel, then hello and welcome. My name is Emma. This is my channel, Pronunciation with Emma. I focus on British pronunciation and accents. I also focus on grammar, vocabulary, culture, slang, pretty much everything related to England and British English. So if all of that sounds like your cup of tea and you're interested in weekly videos, then hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to also click that bell icon as well to receive notifications every single time I post a new video or I go live. Tip number one is identify exactly what problems you have with grammar. So be very specific with this. Don't just say, ooh, prepositions, ooh, tenses, okay? Which tenses? What kind of prepositions? Once you identify those, you'll be able to focus on those, correct those, practice those, and hopefully perfect those. The next tip I recommend is reading. Some books that I recommend are, of course, Harry Potter. I definitely recommend this one. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. A parallel text, which essentially has one page in your target language, which for you would be English, and another in your native language. And the last one I want to recommend is a graded reader. So you can find graded readers with any type of story. This one is Frankenstein and this one is frozen pizza and other slices of life. So basically they take normal books and they adapt them to certain levels. So you can find one that is your level and read that. So when you're reading, take notice of any structures that are new for you, structures that you're maybe familiar with already, but they just need a little bit more practice and reinforcement inside your brain, and start practicing how to use those. How do you practice? You practice with writing. So practice writing very short sentences using the things that you have problems with. So for me, with Spanish and Portuguese, I have problems with past tenses. So I would write very short structures, very short sentences, just practicing the past tense. And I would keep practicing and practicing and then comparing my answer with conjugation charts. That's basically all I did. And once I practiced, I would say after about two or three days, I got it. I was able to just use the past tenses, I remembered the conjugation and the structures, how we use them. So actually, I avoided the past tenses for so long and I don't even know why. I essentially convinced myself that they were difficult and so I never practiced them. But once I faced my fear, let's say, and I started practicing those past tenses, I got them and I've had no problems since. So with your writing, see if you can find a teacher or a friend to correct those sentences and give you some feedback. If you don't have anyone to give you feedback, that's no problem, there are other ways. You can download Grammarly, which is essentially a plugin into Google Chrome, and this gives you basically, not feedback, but corrections on your grammar. Now, it's not going to correct everything, but it will definitely correct any very obvious mistakes that you make. So it's good to get a little bit of feedback and the plugin is free. Now, another way that you can get feedback and corrections is by using a good and reliable grammar book, which has the answers in the back. One grammar book which I highly recommend is this one. The English Grammar in Use book by Raymond Murphy. Why do I love this book? I'll tell you. Now, I believe that investing in a good grammar book is crucial, honestly. I've seen some grammar books out there, they can just have the, the tiniest writing, so much explanation, and then very little practice. But this, my friends, is the absolute best one I've come across. The reason why I love this book so much is the way that it's organized and the way that it explains things. Actually, when I was becoming a teacher, so when I was doing my teacher training, I used this book to help me practice my grammar because it explains things so clearly and so easily and so well, I was able to understand it, okay? So then I could start teaching. That was many years ago when I did my teacher training, but I still love it, so it just shows how good this book is. 
If you are a fellow teacher watching this video, you can also use it with your students. So it can be used for self-study or it can be used as essentially additional materials in your classes. The book is essentially organised into different sections, so it talks about different tenses, talks about prepositions, which I mentioned at the beginning, that's always a massive problem. There is a whole unit just dedicated to prepositions, which is fantastic. Also, as I said, the explanations are so clear. So each section is essentially organised where you have just the explanations. They are so, so simple. They're so easy to get. So the explanations are on one page and then here you have plenty of exercises to practice everything that is over here. So one key thing to mention with this book is that at the back we have the key. These are all the answers we need for the, for the exercises during the book, basically. So it's great for the teacher and it's great for the student if they want to self-study. The book is also designed so that you can choose any unit in any place at any time, okay? So you do not need to start from the first unit. I know some students, they start from unit one and they're like, oh, but I know there's grammar already. That's fine, skip it, it's okay. That's how the book was designed. So if you have problems with, look here, have to and must, okay? Maybe you have problems with this, this is unit 31. So you can just go straight to that, do those activities, practice, check your answers at the back, see how you're doing, and that's that. Now, if you're not sure you need to study, what's great is that there is a little test at the very back of the book that you can do. And at the very back, it will explain which unit you need to go to to practice those things that you're having problems with. So during that little test at the back, you can see what areas you have difficulties with, and it will tell you which unit in the book to go to to practice that. So it's great if you don't know what you have problems with, the book will tell you. <laughs> also, if you need a little bit of guidance right at the beginning of the book, there are the author's notes. So there are notes for students and notes for teachers. They just give you a little bit of guidance on how to use the book, so that's fantastic. A little bit of extra support there for you. Now with the latest edition of the book, there is also the ebook available, which you can download and you could use to practice your pronunciation and listening skills. So if you'd really like to invest in a book, I definitely recommend this one. I just, I can't recommend it enough, honestly. I really can't. It's great. That's all I can say. So I will leave a link below if you'd like to purchase that. Now, something really, really, really exciting for you guys. Cambridge have told me that they will give away not one, but two copies of this book, this exact book, to one teacher and one student. All you have to do is this. In the comments below, I would like you to tell me whether you are a language teacher or a language student. Please tell me if you are one or the other. I know us teachers are all technically students, but do just tell me one or the other, okay? And also tell me, what is the part of grammar that you most struggle with? If you are a teacher, then what is it that your students struggle with the most? So on Friday the 22nd, it will close, we won't accept any more, and we will choose a winner. Two winners, in fact. A student and a teacher. That is it. So guys, get commenting down below. Tell me, are you a student or are you a teacher? Also, don't forget to tell me, what problems do you have with grammar or what problems do your students have with grammar if you are a teacher? Go and tell me those below. I'm so excited to read your comments and find out more about your struggles. I may actually pick a couple of those and then talk about them in future videos. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye. Tip number one is identify what problems you have with grammar. Don't avoid them and be specific. Those are the biggest piece of us. Now it's not. Now it's not going. To, now it's not going to. Now it's not going to correct everything.